Tonight we saw Bad Boys for Life, the third movie in the Bad Boys trilogy starring Wild Wild Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. Connor, what's the plot of Bad Boys for Life? Bad Boys The Force Awakens starred <laughs> Will Smith and Martin Lawrence um, as Will Smith's ex-girlfriend is broken out of prison by her son, J. Cole, and J. Cole assassinates political figures. And then Will Smith goes on a murderous rampage killing everybody. And Martin Lawrence makes horrible jokes for two hours. Um, eventually, they start teaming up with Will Smith's girlfriend. Um, his new girlfriend? Or his, his, girlfriend? his new girlfriend from the A-team. Um, the A-team in this movie is uh, Will Smith's lesbian looking girlfriend. Um, Two gay twinks, one of which is fascinated with Will Smith banging his mom, <laughs> and, and um, Vanessa Pudgens. Vanessa Pudgens, and Will Smith or Martin Lawrence retires. Marcus retires because he has a grandson now, but he comes out of retirement and decides that he doesn't mind killing people, despite the fact that he only kills like one person in the movie. Long past, he decides it's fine to kill people. Um, and somehow, the most basic plot of any movie I've ever watched before still has a muddled and confusing plot. So, Aiden, what did you think of Bad Boys The Force Awakens? You're right, The Connor, Force Awakens it really for black is, people. It really is the African-American Force Awakens. Um, you know, I, I kind of expected it to be, like, bad. And it's kind of just, like, generic and bland. I, I, I wish Michael Bay had done it, because, you know, say what you want about Michael Bay, but that man knows how to uh, keep you engaged by having lots of explosions and close-ups of women's asses and tits. This movie was not nearly horny enough to be mostly a Michael Bay movie. I mean, I know he didn't direct it, but he directed the first two. I mean, honestly, if I was told it was directed by Michael Bay... The only thing that's missing is the ass and titties. Based on how yeah. muddled and confusing the plot well, is. Well, fucking hell. Based on the death and Here's explosions, the literally the all it's missing is the horny humor. This movie is made for two audiences. And I'm not saying this to be offensive, but the only people who want to see this movie are black people and Mexicans who like Fast and the Furious. Fast and the Furious is way hornier than this shit. Fast and the Furious gets away with it, and this movie... This series used to be made by Michael Bay, so I don't know why the fuck this movie chickened out on being horny. <laughs> Isaiah um, said there was a scene where two CGI rats fuck like humans. Yeah, See, that's I, I the trademark it. Michael Bay shit this uh, movie needs. Yeah, that is the that is the kind of stuff it's missing. Because it's trashy, but it's Truthfully, not trashy enough. It feels yeah. like a fucking... It feels like a CIS episode turned rated R and starring Will Smith. Like, this feels like NCIS Miami the movie. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, pretty much. It got a little gory, but not that gory. Pretty much, ugh. The only yeah. time that was really gory was when J. Cole's mom breaks out of jail. It, it was, was never was really, like, tame. it was never really, like, funny. There Some of the like, action was, like... a couple like, jokes that landed. There's, not there's a little, a few times where I chuckled, but it wasn't, like, amazing. Hmm. Um, the action is okay. I mean... It was nothing, like, crazy. I mean, it, it certainly... It felt kind of, like, knockoff, like, modern Fast and the Furious. Like, Furious 7 is just, like, the most ballistic movie I've ever seen. Right. And this felt like it kind of wanted to capture that, because they had, like, lots of car stuff, and they had the stuff with the motorcycle. It just didn't really, like... It didn't go, like, full retard like Furious 7 did, which kind of held it back from being as good as... The, the Fast and the Furious movies. Um, this definitely felt like... It felt like a soft reboot in vain of Jurassic World and, like, fucking Force Awakens. And there was minor torch passing with, like, Will Smith's son at the end. They kind of imply that even though he's, like, kills, mass like, murder, a mass like you can mass be on my team. And well, he's like, we're gonna get you... His redemption. redeemed. Everyone has know. really awful arcs in this movie. Right. Cuba Gooding Jr. is like I used to race snow. I used to race <laughs> snow dogs, but now I believe in Jesus, so I won't kill anyone anymore. 
And then Will Smith is like, God wants you to murder people, and so he starts shooting a minigun everywhere, but doesn't manage to kill everyone, anyone. I mean, he does Will kill a couple people in the body. Will Smith's thing, character arc is... He's mad that he gets shot, but survives because of plot armor. And well, no, Will Smith is like a hothead, but has to learn the value of family, and then he learns the value of family, which is like fucking goddamn but he does Tyler Perry show. But he fucking... His yeah, he also, his son feels like the latter half of Columbine is more successful. Yeah, his son's character arc is I'm gonna murder a bunch of fucking people with a sniper well, rifle you, and blow their okay. brains out. So and then Will Smith is like, I'm your dad, and he's like, Oh shit, okay. Well, they also set oops. the son up to be redeemed because there's the one scene which feels almost like where he doesn't shoot, shoot the civilians. Where he's like, I don't shoot civilians. But then the scene where he saves his mom, he kills like where an he ambulance blasts away, like and nurses shit. and fucking EMTs. Like and... maybe the security guards count as not civilians, but I mean ambulance <laughs> drivers. <laughs> Yeah, the I guy mean, driving would, the ambulance I would say does not. it's a stretch. It is a stretch to call innocent security guard ladies and gentlemen not. Yeah, they're not. It's a very big stretch. stretch. But the stretch ambulance Armstrong. driver is like they're part of the authority, so that is why they're no they're not I civilians, guess, yeah. but not really part of the authority. You just call the same hotline to get help from them because the ambulance drivers. What the fuck did they do? They just get murdered by J. Cole, and he seems no remorse, but then later on, basketball ref doesn't get murdered because she's a civilian. It seems like and that was something yeah. in there that so that the redemption seems less eh. Yeah, I, I mean, guess. it is a cheesy action movie, so and even though he murdered 90 nameless pretty people... Pretty much the only other one who had an arc was Chad White porn star guy. He was a pacifist, and then he decided to murder people because Will Smith said that he'd pay for his therapy, and then he murdered a bunch of people. Right. And those those were the arcs. Well, then A.C. Slater has an arc, too, because at first A.C. Slater's a hothead and doesn't like Will Smith because oh, yeah, Will like, Smith's a hothead. Will Smith is like, I banged your mom, and he's like, fuck you, bro. I'm the boss of this gym. And then Get out of that jabroni makes... outfit. And then at the end of the movie, he's like... You know what, you jabroni? You did fuck my mom. It's <laughs> really yeah, weird. It's implied that, yeah, that Will Smith actually did fuck and then his I mom guess, and he thinks it's funny. And then I guess he thinks Will Smith and his ex-girlfriend have sexual tension again? Is that an arc? It doesn't feel like an arc. Yeah. Feels like... Let's see, um, Jay Cole has an arc. He goes from evil villain to the second he... he and he loves and he kill anybody to, to save his mom to immediately, Will Smith, I'm a good guy. And I'm your dad, so it doesn't really matter that we're about to waste your mom's ass. Then Martin Lawrence, no, not Martin Lawrence, lesbian girl, wastes yeah. J. Cole's mom, and J. Cole's yeah, just like, whatever. A, that would have been a really good time for Cuba Gooding Jr. to like, Cole's mom actually up, shot you know? him. Yeah. Because Cuba Gooding Jr. had that whole thing where he's like, I'm not going to kill because it's evil, but, you know, maybe maybe if he, like, took out his gun and shot the evil Plus, this movie was so lady. cheesy that is it bad that I wanted Cuba Gooding Jr.? to murder Will Smith's ex-girlfriend and say something cheesy like, we're bad boys for life or something. Well, no, they kept calling her witch, so he'd be like, you got burned at the stake or something. I don't know. I don't no, know. okay, here's the thing. She's about to shoot Will Smith, and all of a sudden he pulls up with a dump truck and dumps a load of sand on her and buries her. And he's like, now you're a sand witch. <laughs> <laughs> or here's another one. <laughs> All of a sudden, Will Smith, he's about to get shot, or like the son is shot, he's injured. Will Smith is like, just, you know, you don't have to do this or some shit. Keeby Gooding Jr. jumps up with a fucking pack of dogs. His dogs come up and he's fucking he says, you're a dog witch? I don't understand how that's a pod. That just seems like you smash two unrelated words together. Never heard the phrase dog witch before. Uh -huh. I'm really yeah. excited for Snow Dogs for Life, though. I think it's going to be really good. Yeah, well, honestly... When the Snow Dogs have to come out of retirement. Bad Boys Forever seems like, okay, come out of retirement, and this is kind of like a final thing, or like a Passion of the Torch movie when they inevitably try to make this a franchise if it makes money. The problem is, this clearly sets up a franchise. Like, what this did was they revived a dead franchise... A relic of the 90s and they're just gonna start running with it because Will Smith right after this movie came out said yeah I want to make more bad boys and Martin Lawrence said yeah I want to make more bad boys because I imagine most of that 170 million dollar 
Uh, went budget went Will straight Smith's into pocket. Will's pocket. Martin probably got a decent little chunk too. They're probably just gonna milk the cash cow till the franchise flops again. Because this movie, I mean, I imagine does very well with. with yeah, the, sometimes it's kind of cute when they sneak the name into the name of the movie and in, into the movie. You know, it got a little tacky when Will Smith went up to Martin Lawrence and said, "We're bad boys for life. Only in IMAX at select theaters." Yeah, or strange. when when at the wedding of, of Cubic Gooden Jr. Martin Lawrence's daughter, he says, "They they now toast to bad, bad boys too." Something bad. No, now we truly are bad boys three, for life. Now we truly are the Hobbit, the Desolation of Smog in sixty FPS IMAX and select theaters. And don't forget to see Spies in the Skies, also starring Will Smith in theaters now as well. Also, if you guest starring Tom Holland. So then Martin Lawrence high fives him, and Tom Holland comes out of the corner and also high fives him, and they all start kissing. Yeah, but Wild Wild West for Life was a really good movie. I liked the part where they had the bigger giant spider, um, and uh, Will Smith had the bigger cowboy hat. I feel like there's like nothing more to say. This my ultimate. Yeah, this movie's pretty generic. My ultimate <laughs> thought about this movie is. It is a generic action movie. I will say, like, it's a relic of its time. Because I feel like if this came out in the 90s, it would feel like a big action movie. But by today's standards, the only thing I can compare it to is, like, a primetime fucking yeah. NCIS type. I mean, it is quite literally the Force Awakens for black people. Just like how Fury 7 was the Force Awakens for Mexicans. It's when Paul Walker stopped being yeah, a but character and they just handed it off Fast to Vin Fast and the Furious Weasel just and... has never ended. That's the thing. Star Wars kind of ended yeah, for but, a while. Yeah, so but here's Jurassic the thing. Park and Bad Boys. Furious, the first four Fur Fast and the Furious movies and kind of Fast and Furious 5 were about Paul Walker and street racing. And then with 6 and 7, they're just like, okay, Vin Diesel's now the main character yeah, and now I mean, it's a retired they, action movie. They bended genres and switched And also it The to Rock a, is here. They did switch it to a completely different genre and the movie's not even that similar. But... It is just a continuation. The franchise just weirdly evolved to whatever made him money. The only thing that's in common is it has cars, it has shooting, and it is very horny. Okay. That is the only drawing no, line between the Fast There's one drawing the line. Movies. There's one thing that every Fast and the Furious movie has Vin in Diesel. common. It's not Vin Diesel. It's not actors. I thought Vin Diesel was all. It's not action. He's not in Tokyo Drift. Yeah. They it's all appeal to Mexicans. <laughs> the, I think Tony that's that's Drift was trying to throw in the Hmong audience. Yeah, what are the Hmong but the Mexicans of Asia? Got me there, bro. <laughs> Got me there. Will Smith brought his Will Smith charisma. See, the thing... Okay, most Will Smith movies are bad. I think we can agree that. But the Will Smith movies that are bad but not absolutely terrible are the ones that bring charisma. Wild Wild Will Smith, Will Smith has his charisma and it's so bad it's funny. And that's why I place it over something like After Earth. Independence Or presumably Day. Gemini Man. Independence Day. Or Independence Day. But when Will Smith just has that charisma to say, I just do cheesy movies for black people, <laughs> that is what I want to see from Will Smith. He's a good actor when he does that shit. Maybe not a good actor, but I mean, he's got to have that Will Smith fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Mm -hmm. I might be 30 years removed from being a child, but I'm going to still act like I'm a 16-year-old boy. I'm going to do Fortnite dances in this movie because yeah, that yeah. actually happens. It's a um, type of charisma. You know, the, the police chief was probably the worst one in the movie. He was really bad. Cuba Gooding Jr. didn't feel like he was trying at all. Uh, one thing that really annoyed me... Jay Cole and Will Smith's uh, ex-girlfriend weren't that bad. Should, Not... Oh. Not his Mexican ex-girlfriend, but his, his, uh, well, his other Mexican ex-girlfriend. The cop one. Yeah. Her and, her, the, the cop ex-girlfriend and Jay Cole weren't that bad either. Everyone else was pretty awful. Cuba Gooding Jr. didn't try. Do you think the two gay porn stars have to suck each other's dicks to get into the movie? They're like, this is an audition. Probably. They're like, where are all the girls at? And then they're like, they probably, oh, your dicks. They probably came into, into the audition. To their off. They probably came into the audition, they're like, so whose dick are we sucking? They're like, no, this is an audition for a real movie series, and they're like, what? Casting director walks in, it's like, well, this is, you went to the wrong studio, this is the Will Smith thing. And the guy looks over, and they're like, do you think you're good at technology? And the guy's like, I could probably pretend. He's like, I've never really done this before, I'm... 
Do you Mostly think, a jabroni. Do you think it was awkward, like, this, the eighth day of shooting? They're like, wow, this is the most elaborate porno we've ever done, right, Chad? <laughs> Then so like, when yeah, do we start right fucking each other? Yeah, they start fucking each other. So when do we start fucking? Why did they have the baby in this movie? What do you mean? The baby is a, a very pointless plot device to make Martin Lawrence not. It's a, a very cop pointless anymore. plot device. But here's the thing. It's the the only thing that keeps him from being a police officer. Every half the movie. Every movie that has a baby has a baby for a reason. This one has the vague reason of he wants to retire because he has a grandkid, right? But like, think about every other movie with the baby in existence. You gotta have like action set pieces with the baby, like where the baby gets like blown out of a car. And then well, no, they're like okay, so they're running. in the car and they have the baby in the back and they start getting chased by motorcycles. They hijack the motorcycles and Will Smith has the baby, and all of a sudden there's a guy shooting a rocket launcher at him, and he throws the baby to Martin Lawrence. And Martin Lawrence catches it and swings by his it hat and starts and he, shaking he it. He grabs it and he's like, "No, no, baby." He's got his one hand on the motorcycle and he's rocking the baby so it doesn't cry. He's like, "Oh shit!" And then there's and then a then helicopter in his way. Will Smith crashes his motorcycle. While the baby's in his hand. Will Smith crashes his motorcycle into like a jeep or something. He crawls into the front seat of the jeep and hijacks it. And then Martin Lawrence is like, "Take the baby back." And throws the baby in and the And then Will Smith says, I don't want know. the baby! For like a little comedy scene. Yeah, and they're, they're like the tossing it back and forth. And then like, the baby's one crying. of the bad guys throws a grenade. And Will Smith is like, throw me the baby! And, and the grenade can. lands <laughs> in his hands and he's like... And then he throws it backwards and blows up the bad guys, you know? Something like that. Right. You know, that's that's a movie with the baby. Maybe there's a little half... Like, Martin <laughs> Lawrence doesn't really come to a realization that he needs to be a cop. There's no real reason he wants to. Will Smith kind of just oh, peer no, pressures he, him into it. Well, he does get peer pressured, but he wants to get revenge because the captain gets shot in the fucking face and dies. Yeah, but the first time he comes explodes. back, he comes back like three times and is like, no, at the end of the scene, and then the captain dies. He's like, I guess I'm just back for real. But the captain's death, that whole scene was so baffling because Will Smith's at his lowest point because he fights someone that he doesn't know. He doesn't know this is his son, so it's not. You know I don't understand why it's impactful. Is? He's sad. Captain tells him Buddha quote, Captain gets sniped, now it's time for revenge. Even though he was already trying that to get revenge. That seems a little weird. Because wasn't it, doesn't he need revenge enough? Like, couldn't the captain have died or he goes into a coma? Like, it seems like they just give Will Smith 300 reasons to fight this guy. You know what the really baffling scene is? What? At, at Cuba Gooding Jr.'s daughter's wedding, at, uh, you know, Cuba Gooding Jr. Jr.'s wedding, um, Will Smith is there in a fucking wheelchair. And yeah, he rolls he up, and then he does his wedding toast, and he just stands up, and he's never in the wheelchair again. He has and no he's problems. He's fine just, to fight J. Cole, like presumably. The, like The oh. miracle of this wedding somehow just, like, cured him of being fucking crippled. Paralyzed, yeah. You he's know what this movie needed? This might be bad to say, and I mean, I, ass. No, I know they couldn't afford this, but Ass's they just needed to find a way to work the rock into this movie. He could have just been, like, the leader of the spy cool. group instead of this girlfriend that apparently didn't exist in previous movies. Well, no, what you do, you, uh... Just put the fucking rock in the goddamn movie. This movie was idea. made for the that's rock. That's a good idea, yeah. This movie was made for the fucking rock. Or, if you can't afford the rock, well, okay. Here's Vin Diesel's do. probably slightly cheaper. You move the chief's death up. Right. And then, the because the chief has died, the FBI moves in, and the hot-headed FBI field agent is played by The Rock. And even though so he's you're a, saying get rid wants, of the ammo and just replace that whole group with just The Rock. Yes. Yeah, so The Rock comes in, and he's like, Will and Smith, he's like, you're, you're, too, this you're too close to this case, Will Smith. You can't be on it. I'm going to solve this myself. It and is then Will rate. Smith proves himself, and Will Smith, at the end, no. he's like, Will Smith he gets on The Rock's back as like a backpack. And The Rock is like punching people, and Will Smith has like a minigun. He's like, no, and what you if, can just like, what throw if Martin to Lawrence write The Rock out? Something. Instead of adding all these characters no one cares about, make The Rock, and at first all he's like, just like, he's views. like, you're a hothead, you're not following the book and shit. And then in the final scene, turn in your gun and your badge to my office. In the final scene, and then Will Smith puts the Will gun Will Smith in the badge. and Martin Lawrence are gonna lose. Martin Lawrence are gonna lose. They can't win the fight. All of a sudden, The Rock comes over the Gatling gun. And he's like, you called this, you called Ricky or whatever the name of him or whatever. And he's like, tch, 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 and he starts shooting everyone. And he's, tch, 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 and people are blowing up. Tch, 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 tch. And then the Rock says, "Fuck it, you know what? I'm a bad boy for life. TM only in the IMAX and Dolby 3D cinema." Tch, 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 tch. 
Yeah. It's well, the same result, there has to be, except there's a character we care about. There has to be a scene where we, Will Smith gets fired by The Rock. We don't care about The Rock's characters, we care about The Rock. Rock comes in, says, says, Will, you're off the case. And Will says, over my dead body. Then they get in a fist fight, and it looks close at first, but then The Rock pummels his ass, and The Rock uh -huh. says, I'm just playing with you, Will. And then Will gets humbled for a minute. And then, like, two scenes later, The Rock says, Oh, fuck it. I'm a bad boy forever. And he lifts up his chain gun and he's blasting motherfuckers. I like how we just rewrote this movie except for an entire, like, six characters just get replaced <laughs> by The Rock. Otherwise, it's no different. It's absolutely the same. Just, like, six characters are replaced by The Rock. But yeah, and that's how you make the fucking franchise. You can well, revive any franchise with The Rock. Honestly, movie, dude, Jesus. episode nine, this is how you save episode nine. Ray's at her lowest point, you know? She's sad. Leia has so died between movies, and the the Rock is training her to be a Jedi, but says you're a hothead, you're off the case. And then Ray and the Rock fight, and it's closed. But then the Rock roundhouse kicks her and punches her in the face and says you're off the case. Turn in your badge or your and your lightsaber. And then the Rock and your other lightsaber. <laughs> the Rock, the Rock tries to fight Kylo Ren alone. He's about to get beaten out of nowhere. Ray comes out. The Emperor. Okay. Ray's getting rocked by the Emperor. She's getting fucked up. And then the rock comes up. Bam! Right in the face. The Emperor's nose is bleeding everywhere. Then he pulls up the chain gun. All those yeah, Sith disciple guys are just gun. getting shot. And he's like, Ray, you gotta do this quick. And then Ray kills the Emperor. She's like, come on, Rock. We gotta get out of here. And the Rock's like, don't worry. I got just what we need. And then they hop in the space Bugatti and they start driving. DJ Khaled's in this movie for like five seconds. He shows up and Will Smith... Hits him with a meat hammer. So, Aiden, would you recommend Bad Boys for Life? Depends on your race. If you're black or Mexican, you're probably going to love Bad Boys for Life. If you're white, probably not. <laughs> I wouldn't. Am I wrong? Would I, you recommend Bad Boys for Life? I wouldn't. I mean, it wasn't a terrible movie. I would call it bad, but almost good enough to just be eh. You know what I'm saying? Like, the plot is muddled and shitty. But it's not completely unentertaining. I was just like 60% bored. I was 60% bored. Bad Boys for Life is kind of like the trashy movie you'd put on like Netflix when you're drinking with friends. Just have some background noise. Right. And honestly, too, the other thing is, I hate to say it, but you're probably right. It felt like a movie I was watching where I was like, there's a certain demographic that would really like this movie. I ain't trying to be racist, <laughs> but I it is... It's, it's like a Marvel movie for black people. 